motivated aliens or something? 7-Eleven is an absolute menace to society, but, but hey, maybe there's a level somewhere in the rest of the game that puts this one's difficulty to shame. Puts this one's difficulty to shame. Puts this one's difficulty to shame. Sometimes I really hate how good I am at predicting the future, and I'm usually not even that good at it. I started making this video with the confidence gained from completing some very tricky levels and earning substantial internet clout, which was enhanced by absolutely breezing through the big setup in under an hour, as some astute viewers aptly predicted. At this point, I was wondering if I needed to start playing Bird Day Party to round out this video and make it a complete experience. It's a good thing I didn't, though, because it absolutely wouldn't have been necessary. The combined difficulty of Hammam High with Mine and Dine more than makes up for Episode 4's lack of challenge. You can trust me on that. One of the levels took me over two and a half hours, longer than any stage from part one. And you don't even want to know about the levels that took longer than that. Nah, who am I kidding? The whole reason you're here is an insatiable desire for multi-hour Angry Birds levels and human suffering. I'm honored to provide both. But what makes the big setup so trivially easy? Well, last time a lot of you said I forgot Terrence, but that's not true. I would never forget Terrence. It just didn't seem worth bringing him up since he wasn't going to appear in the video. But now he has arisen, and our big boy absolutely belongs up in S tier with Bomb. While his immense destructive power can be finicky, it has the incredible advantage of relying only on Terence's mass instead of some unique bird ability that I'm unable to use. Oh, yeah, if you somehow still haven't read the title, description, or watched part one, I'm trying to complete every level in the original Angry Birds without activating a bird special ability. And because the big setup's levels are composed entirely of Terence with the occasional howl, I'm playing on easy mode with S and A tier birds. So there's not a single level that's worth your precious, valuable time to specifically cover. But it is worth your precious, valuable time to like, subscribe, and leave a comment asking for part 3 if you enjoy this video, because that's how I know what to make more of. If you hate this video, just reverse those things. Dislike, unsubscribe, take a comment. You know how it goes. I might as well wander over to the Wild West, where my embryos have been lassoed by lime green livestock. Welcome to Hammam High. Hi, 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 hi. Ugh, sorry guys, I was just playing through the first levels of the episode when my computer decided it was time to faceplant virtual dirt and completely crashed, corrupting my footage. So while these five levels weren't particularly a problem, I had to replay them to get more footage, and I couldn't even look at my old strategies. So that was pretty annoying, but now I'm done venting to you and we can move on to the first problematic stage in the run. 12-6 stands as a poster child for the recurring challenge of this video, that being the pigs are too far away to hit without using bird powers. Last episode, I discussed the destructive utility of the bird powers, but Chuck's, Blue's, and Matilda's powers also function as unique movement options. Chuck's speed boost lets him travel much further and adjust his angle, Blue's splitting allows him to cover more angles, and Matilda's blast off lets her maneuver around obstacles or reach further locations. It's only in episode 5, 250 levels into the game, that the devs really began to experiment with requiring proper use of these movement techniques to beat the levels, and I don't have access to them. In case you can't tell, levels with this problem are going to be ridiculously painful to beat. Luckily, 12-6 is just an introduction, and only took me about half an hour. True agony lies ahead. Knocking the water tower over with Chuck seems like a sensible opening shot at first glance, because it removes an obstacle that prevents me from reaching the furthest pigs while taking out the first two. Dude, how did you get in there, and why are you upside down? Eh, you're building your rules, I'm just here to kill you. Unfortunately, the three beyond the tower are problematic, especially the corporal, because there's no arc that takes my birds far enough to hit him. This is where the tower comes back into play, because when hit from the top, the base can be left standing, and with some luck, a domino reaction will knock the closest enemy off his perch. After my second chuck finishes off pig number three, Blue is able to break through the remaining glass, bounce forward off of the platform, and destabilize the barrier in front of the final corporal, which falls down to defeat pig four. While the final enemy is protected from rolling off by the gap between the stone block and the wood block, my last bird can launch identically to the previous one, but with no wall in the way, he's just enough to push that helmet hog over the edge. 12-8 is a puzzle predicated upon precise poultry propulsion. At a glance, I knew it wouldn't be too difficult, but without the extra damage afforded by Matilda's and Chuck's abilities, I needed to figure out the optimal strategy to collapse this wooden structure. Red starts by taking out the bottom enemy, and the one above it by proxy, but the important part of this shot comes after, when this piece of wood falls down onto this other piece of wood. Riveting, I know. This lets Chuck thread the needle between this glass and wooden slab for the last three pigs, and the one up top is exclusively Matilda's domain. 
13 4. Uh, normally I have these like scripted out and stuff, but here it just says watermelons in all caps, and I'm not entirely sure what to do with that information. I mean, there are a lot of watermelons in this level, and it's pretty fun to watch it all like collapse and fall over and stuff, but yeah, I mean, main takeaway is watermelons, I guess. I beat the next few levels on my first try until I got to 13-8, which is a bit of a spiritual sequel to 2-2, except here the pigs are more spread out, which my lackluster three-bird setup struggles to accommodate. However, it's easy enough for Red to knock over the house, exterminating those evil egg eaters. This leaves four pigs up to my binary blue jays, complicated by the impossibility of dispatching all three pigs in the bath with a single bird. Instead, an arcing shot will take care of two, leaving the concluding bird to ricochet after defeating this large lowlife and fall onto the final enemy. 13-12 provides me with a hefty bird loadout, but mitigates this advantage with some top tier defenses, and the furthest tiny pig is safely sealed in the stone strawberry storage. It was up to chance whether these large towers worked to my advantage, as knocking them over could result in all the pigs underneath getting crushed, but it might just as easily bury them and force me to restart. And there were plenty of times I got everyone, except for Mr. Strawberry Crate over here. Rude, I bet those strawberries don't even taste very good. I figured out pretty quickly that the optimal first shots were arcing Chuck to target the construction worker and his little friend underneath, then collapse the strawberry storage with Matilda to give Hal a clean shot at the central tower. It also needs to get rid of the last pig here, and some decent precision is actually needed for that, which was rather vexing without any background elements to line up my cursor with. Hal has the mass required to properly collapse this tower, and then it's up to my last three birds to pick off the stragglers. Chuck damaged the box, allowing Matilda to break through, and a rather sloppy arcing shot was enough to finish them off. 13-15 is densely packed, making it hard to get the furthest pigs. Luckily, I had a couple of Terrences at my disposal, although sometimes the physics system decides that it doesn't want to let Terrence do his job today. I might not know how some shots can be so much weaker than others, but I do know that it's extremely irritating. With a solid shot to take out the six pigs on the left and collapse the right side, Hal revoked the Sheriff's badge. Terrence too cleared some debris, allowing Chuck and Chuck to lay waste to the lingering wrongdoers. At first glance, I was worried 14-4 was impossible. It seemed like there would be no way to hurt the pigs on the upper level, as they were too far for Chuck to reach. I was hoping that TNT could blast the stone block into the underside of the structure, but that idea wasn't very promising based on my first attempt. I was mentally prepping to grind for hours when I made this lucky, unexpected shot. Yeah, apparently that's all it takes. And with that solution in hand, finishing the rest of the level was no problem. 14-8 didn't take me very long, but that's only because I got an insanely lucky shot with Chuck that collapsed the entire structure. Yeah, this is way too satisfying to not include. Why'd they give me four whole birds? The difficulty in this game is all over the place. When I first laid eyes on 14-12, I expected it to take me maybe 30 minutes at most. I had a decent bird setup with plenty of opportunities to exploit type advantages, there was TNT on the far side of the level, and traps were set up to create chain reactions. But in reality, it only took me four and a half hours. Welcome to the new hardest Angry Birds level to beat without any bird powers. I'll come back to this one at the end of the section, but until then, enjoy this glass ball breaking the speed of physics calculations and clipping straight through the ceiling. 14-13 was hard to penetrate because of how thick it was, but the solution quickly became apparent. Activate that TNT, somehow. Given that it's surrounded on all sides and inaccessible from behind with nothing I could bounce off of, that would be difficult enough. But these stone blocks on top make it basically impossible to get a good shot from above, while the little wooden pyramid blocks kept me from collapsing the right side. And when I did break the support, it just resulted in everything getting buried and harder to reach. Eventually though, my final Chuck got the unique opportunity of a clear shot at the damaged support, allowing him to bounce through before being pinned by the debris and destroy the second support as well. That was the trick. Even though I never reached the TNT, it still collapsed the structure enough for me to move on. 14-15 is comparatively a cakewalk, although detonating this TNT is still harder than it looks. After breaking through, the rest of the tower usually collapsed, blocking me once again, and unfortunately crashing into the dynamite isn't a guaranteed win either. But when my second chuck had just enough power to break this wooden ceiling and fell the fortress, the entire building was blasted apart as a bonus. That left only Matilda's mass <laughs> magnificent bodies to smash through and wreck the remaining swine. 
After absolutely demolishing this poor sombrero to assert dominance over King Pig, I guess it's time for me to face my fears and discuss 14-12. I can only avoid it for so long, but what gives this new crown holder the record? Well, there are quite a few factors, the most obvious of which is the extremely awkward distance of the second house from the slingshot. Every collection of enemies here poses a unique challenge, though. Group 1 can be described as the three pigs in the stone and glass house, along with this little outlier down here on the left. Because I definitely can't spare a bird to target him specifically, I have to get lucky with the debris after I collapse the building. Usually that's not a problem, and by usually I mean about 80% of the time. If hit by a glass ball instead of a stone, he'll more or less end up completely invulnerable. Group 2 consists of these three hogs halfway in, occupying wooden teepees. Now it might look like they'd be the easiest to take care of because of these rolling rocks ready to wreak ruination, but these boulders aren't as powerful as they look. No, hang on, that was way too nice. They're stupid and useless. While it's technically possible to defeat all three by triggering the avalanche with a couple very specific shots, it is never reliable. Often the closest enemy was the only casualty. Group 3 should be pretty obvious, and it's the only section that can really influence the others. Defeating these guys is dead simple. Breaking this wooden support will collapse the entire house, triggering the TNT on the right, which then detonates the dynamite inside and blasts everything apart. The debris from that explosion can significantly impact the rest of the level. Unfortunately, simple does not equate to easy, and actually dealing enough damage to the support is incredibly difficult. My early attempts were largely characterized by using my first chuck to take out House 1, and basically wasting the blue who followed it most of the time. Oh, you're Jim, you're Jake, and you're Jay? Thanks so much for clearing that up! Alright, so it's Jake here that's being useless, got it. There's just not a whole lot he can do in this situation. It actually is possible to trigger the boulders with him, but that usually results in them being even weaker than normal. My last two birds needed to be spent attempting to break into house two by either triggering the boulders with Matilda while barely brushing the wood for some damage, or just bouncing them both off the slope to hit the support. But barely brushing the wood will barely ever break it, so that didn't do much good. I experimented with using Chuck to knock down the boulders because his bouncing onto the teepees would deal extra damage. I tried knocking down House 1 in all sorts of ways. Honestly, I'm getting tired of fast forwarding through my footage to figure out what to say here, so how about I just skip to the part where I tell you how I did it? Step 1. Shoot Chuck at the top left portion of the boulder to bounce off in an arc and graze the wooden support of the second house. Step 2. Launch Jake at this razor-thin pane of glass to collapse house 1. And if that shot wasn't bad enough on its own, there isn't even a background element to line it up with. Now it was boulder in time. Ricocheting Matilda off the boulders to destroy the woodblock triggered the TNT, and the debris from the blast left only a single TP pig standing. Sitting. Can they stand? All right, this is it. And... No! What? No, oh, no, no, it's fine. It was only another 40 minutes until I got to run this good again. Ugh, next time I had the chance, I finally clutched it out. Woo, nothing could be harder than that, right? Episode 5 has been hammed low, leaving mine and thine as the only obstacle before I can release this video to worldwide acclaim. A pig has learned to dig? How frightening. But believe it or not, there's actually something scarier in this image. A hat. Terrifying. Mining hats afford enemies extra protection, so a collapsing roof might not have the same likelihood of death as it used to. With that in mind, it's time to kill some miners. Wait, hold on, no, I can explain, I promise that's not what I meant. 15-4 sticks me with a very weak bird setup, but the sickening number of blues is alleviated somewhat by the level consisting mostly of glass. And the pigs are almost all in range, which is a nice change of pace. Oh, I am gonna miss this. Blue number 1 can set off a chain reaction that takes out over half the enemies. The rest are harder, though. Blue 2 can send a good chunk of this building tumbling into the chasm, and another pathetic porker, with two mining hats, shuffling off this mortal coil while he's at it. With that debris out of the way, Matilda can arc even further to decisively obliterate the penultimate pig, and my third blue was left with a perfect easy shot to murder this mustache. 15-6 was annoying purely for the number of times I came tantalizingly close to winning, but at least my birds gave me some flexibility in how I approached it. While I had options, they are an underpowered bunch for a level this big. 
Even though it looks more intimidating than the little towers on the left, the house on the right is pretty easy to take down with a single bird, leaving three to deal with the rest. That wouldn't be a problem if it wasn't for the little guy in the box, because he's actually really well protected and can't be defeated without destroying his container. On my successful attempt, Chuck was entirely devoted to finishing him off, and then I finally aimed properly with Red to disintegrate the damaged defenses. From there, it's smooth sailing for a while until I got to 16-7. It's like the exact opposite of smooth sailing because the flying is rough for all of my perturbed poultry. At first, I didn't even know what to do. The furthest pig seemed completely out of reach, and this closest staircase structure seemed strikingly sturdy. I needed at least two birds to bring it down, and usually even that wasn't enough. That was until, after about 20 minutes of experimentation, I found this incredibly dumb shot. Oh, I love it so much. Unfortunately, that was the easy part. Just like in 14-12, this far staircase is at the absolute edge of where my birds can reach without activating their abilities. The hanging TNT is even set up perfectly for Matilda, brutally taunting me every single time I reloaded. The next 20 minutes and two hours of my life were spent experimenting with different ways to collapse the furthest tower. Well, not really. I didn't do this all in one sitting. That would be bad for my mental health. There were some really precise tricks, like making Chuck land under this stone block to balance it on top and destabilize everything, and sometimes I could even collapse the tower, but the big foreman pig in the middle always survived because I couldn't spare a bird to target him. Also, the level just liked to mock me sometimes, like when I took out the support with a super precise shot, and instead of falling over, it just rolled on top of this pig and they both survived. So then I hit it again, and that did nothing either. I was dealing with stuff like this for the entire duration of my attempts, but the upside was that every time I came close, I became a bit more sure that it was possible, and that I just needed the right string of luck to make something work. Eventually, I began consistently using my second Matilda to target the mustache pig. Now, you've heard of falling down the stairs, but the job of my last two chucks was to make the stairs fall down. The strategy that earned me the win involves hitting the corner of this wooden plank with number one, then bouncing the second off the top of this stone block across the gap to hit the corner of the wooden block. Now Chuck needs to bounce perfectly upwards to land on the corner again, which does barely enough damage to destroy the support. Now I just needed to get lucky when everything collapsed, and eventually, I did. Compared to all that nightmare fuel, 16-8 might as well be a vacation. A 50 minute long vacation, but a vacation nonetheless. Why do the hardest levels always have a bunch of Chucks and Matildas? From the beginning, I knew that my final solution wouldn't be fancy. There might be a lot of pigs and a lot of wood, but there are only so many possibilities with three birds. Collapsing the structure in the desired way is pretty inconsistent though, which added a lot of time. A single tiny pig stuck under some rubble means yet another full level restart. Matilda has an odd opening shot, breaking this wooden triangle and removing the closest enemy. My first chuck takes a very precise arc to squeeze between the two buildings before hitting the wall, crumbling the entire right side. Chuck 2 uses a similar approach with the other structure, taking advantage of the opening created by Matilda to break through the first plank, the wall underneath, and the floor the wall sits on, stripping any semblance of stability from the surviving structure. 16-9 has a Matilda and three chucks? Well, I suppose I know what to expect by now. Look, a tiny enemy completely protected in a distant part of the level? We've never seen that before. If only the TNT directly above him did literally anything. Yeah, that would make this level a lot easier. Even when I finally managed to beat the stage, the explosives still couldn't manage to directly kill the hog. Instead, it was only the damage dealt by prior birds that had destabilized it enough for the TNT to wobble everything around, which pushed the puny pig into the corner so the stone brick could finish him off. 17-1 is classically problematic, just like a stage from part 1 might have been. Yeah, let's just all take a deep breath and reminisce about when the pigs were within reach and only blocked by large stone slabs. Ah, simpler times. With three chucks, a Matilda, and a Terrence, I knew I had the firepower to rain feather justice upon every mine and swine, but the layout of the level makes that difficult. Many potential launch angles have stone blocks in the way, and hitting one effectively results in a wasted bird. I began by removing a corporal and the obstacle it was part of, then more or less wasting Matilda, but that doesn't really matter because nobody cares about her anyway. <laughs> wow, hurtful much? Watch your language, this video is rated PG. Terence pulls his weight, er, pushes his weight, by activating the TNT to defeat the best guarded pigs and destabilize the rest of the building, which my remaining pair of chucks was all too happy to capitalize on. 
A solid chunk of the vermin in 17-6 is far out of slingshot range, but there are some TNT crates within reach that I was sure I could use. Getting it to actually blast something up toward that section is easier said than done, though. Even a massive chunk crashing into that area might not be enough to defeat all the enemies there. Do something long enough, though, and eventually, you'll get lucky. Chuck number one can hit this TNT in such a way that it knocks the tower over and takes care of Tarzan up here. Chuck number two arcs over to trigger this other TNT, which swings the box up and around to topple this little mining house. Everything works out nicely, and I didn't even end up needing the Matildas, and yet she still couldn't give me enough points for three stars. Unbelievable. Stay in your lane, missy. Frying pans aren't only for eggs. All the villains in 17-12 are close enough, but the furthest ones are protected by this stalactite they required arc passes through. Besides, even blowing up the TNT isn't usually enough to take care of both these guys. I had a lot of options for approaching the level. Do I arc over the floating island? Which group do I target first? Do I break the stalactite? So finding a coherent strategy took a little while. First, I launched right over the island to break a stalactite, taking out the middle group and bouncing left for another kill. Matilda cleared the path for Chuck to knock the far tower over for a double kill, and my final bird was left with a squeaky clean shot. So that's it, right? I'm done? Another successful adventure? Of course not. If you'd looked at the timestamps, you'd have known this was coming, but otherwise, I lied to you. Or, more accurately, withheld crucial information for dramatic purposes. It's a common storytelling technique. I'm guessing most of you don't have the unique life experience of getting scared by seeing an Angry Birds level, and it is my professional recommendation that you keep it that way. Up until this point, all the levels I'd come across had at least seemed feasible from the outset. In 7-11, I was always one lucky collapse away from victory. In 6-15, the out-of-reach pig was still within my sphere of influence, and in 16-7, I'd managed to kill all the pigs individually multiple times across various attempts before finally getting the one where everything lined up perfectly. As complicated as it was, even 14-12 was proven possible on one of my earliest attempts when I managed to detonate the TNT. Confirming a level is beatable always happens before beating it, even if that confirmation is eyeballing it with confidence. Hey, I've got some credentials, 40 hours in this challenge can't count for nothing. But here was 16-13, a level I could not confirm was possible, and at a glance, seemed to be completely impossible. How am I supposed to deal any damage to this structure when it's completely out of my reach? By the way, I'd just like to take a moment to point out that this cave is bigger than any field or desert that we've previously visited. It's a cave! That doesn't make any sense! Initially, I got past the level with two power uses to finish the rest of the challenge. I know, I'm going to hell for that, but maybe I can end up in purgatory if I can find a way to beat it without powers now. So let's take a closer look. Without the extra distance Chuck's power provides, there's only one way to damage this colossal construction. These four TNT blocks can be detonated to forcefully fling these little stones at the structure, although their damage is extremely inconsistent, along with their flight paths. While it might seem like there's no way to find the optimal rock launch, that actually isn't the problem. If the lowest enemies are impossible to reach, then the top ones are definitely impossible to hit. But it just so happens that a lucky rock launch can push the top area just enough to tilt it over and detonate the TNT block up there. Nice. With that in mind, any guesses on which pig in this level is the absolute hardest to kill? It's this one. Haha, <laughs> I told you before you could guess. My pranking skills have no equal. Ah, wait, I just realized I missed a chance to ask you to comment and drive engagement. Darn. By being completely surrounded on all sides, he's very well protected, so there's only a single explosion configuration that's able to kill him. At least one I found in my hundreds of attempts. Every other pig I was able to get multiple times in some way or another, but not this guy. And it's not at all consistent either. These mining hats have some weird physics properties that let them push other materials around, which ended up crushing him. But these were the only enemies I managed to defeat on this attempt, so it didn't bode well overall. At this point, failure seemed inevitable, but I had one last desperate trick up my sleeve. Find some way to hit the structure without TNT or bird powers. It's finally happened, I am going to war with a physics system, and it actually is possible to hit the structure without powers by bouncing off this pickaxe or a tiny boulder. Problem is, this does essentially zero damage, and even if I was able to destroy this wooden block, it wouldn't be enough to collapse anything. 
I tried a few other desperate strategies like hitting the rocks from above to shift them and create a more favorable blast, but this usually worked to my detriment. I even installed a mouse positioning tool to make pixel perfect shots, only to discover that identical shots aren't guaranteed identical results. After three hours of this torture, I caved. In the other extremely difficult stages, there was always some new idea or strategy that I could attempt, but with only a single bird type, my options were limited, and there weren't exactly boundless ways to interact with this environment. It was time to admit defeat and find a way to beat this level with only a single power use. This turned out to be surprisingly easy though. I used my first shot to topple the closest tower, and with that out of the way, a lucky TNT blast was enough to take care of the rest. The little mining hat still came in clutch. Honestly, this would be super satisfying to watch if it hadn't ruined the challenge. Of course, feel free to attempt 1613 yourself or give me any ideas to beat it, but for now, the video must end with a single, very unfortunate power use on the board. If you all would like me to continue this challenge to find the minimum power uses, please let me know because I need revenge after this little debacle. On the other hand, if you think I should pivot to another game like Angry Birds 2, Seasons, or Space, I'm more than happy to give that a shot. Thank you so much for watching to the end of the video. <laughs>